Hello. So a few people from the uh, who watched the videos asked me to make a easier tutorial to uh, explain uh, how the SDK works, and so I created a little Unity package, and now I will show you uh, from beginning to end how how it works. So we create a new project, um, make it a two D project. We call it Soul Play Example. Create, and then we follow the steps that are here on the Solana Unity Deep Link example. I will put the link again in the description. And what it says here, we need to include this, uh, the link to the SDK in our package manager. And you can either use um, the fork from myself or you directly use the um, Unity SDK from Garbles. But my um, repository may be a few commits before or behind. And then we download this uh, Solplay um, Unity package that we will put in the game. And then there's another little dependency that we need. So the game is loaded and the project is created here. So we go to Window, Package Manager, uh, Add Package from Git URL. We paste in the URL and it will install the package. Then the next thing we do is, as soon as this is done, we go to assets, then import, and then we pick the package from where we just downloaded it. So as soon as this is done, so import custom package. No, I have it here in documents still. So we import this. This is basically the complete example. Um, at some point, I will probably clean it up a little bit more. But uh, since a few people asked me for it and they probably want to continue, I wanted to quickly get out a version that you can work with. So now this is imported. And sadly, it still has a, a dependency to the UI extensions, which are really nice. So we need to add these as well. Just put them here, um, add. Um, shout out to Johannes Demel who made these uh, beautiful UI extensions. It's what I use in the game to, for the uh, nice tab bar on the bottom where you can switch between screens. Okay, so now we have everything in. So we have now this Soul Play folder here. And it has some example scenes, but I want to show you from Sketch uh, how, how you can build um, an example which shows all your NFTs um, with uh, Phantom WebGL. So what we will do is we create a new canvas here. Um, we make a scale with screen size. I usually like to go for a full HD resolution and then scale with height. So and then we look here in the Soul Play folder under Deep Link Example under Prefabs. We pick the login screen and just put it here in the canvas. Then we need to import the Text Mesh Pro Essentials. Then we can already look at it. So what it is, it's uh, just a screen with a phantom login button and a, a DevNet login button. So for some reason here, the Text Mesh Pro thing wasn't recognized correctly. So I will just add it again. Then it will probably work. Yeah, so it's like sometimes Unity has a bit of hiccups with the um, Text Mesh Pro stuff. And this can't be loaded currently because there are uh, there's a compiler error. Extensions are still missing. So let's see, it looks like that did not work. So we try it again, copy the link. Maybe there was a space too much or something. So adding it. Um, so now we don't have any compiler errors anymore. I usually like to put the um, game view on the side. So we have the login screen. And now we're going to put also the NFT screen. And now here in the login screen, you see it has a connected root. So what we're going to do is we create a game object here, call it connected root, and put the NFT screen in there. So we make it expand. Then we put the NFT screen in there. And now as soon as we are logged in, the this uh, screen will be enabled, so the connected root. So I'm going to put this in front. And yeah, now we should already be able to try it out. So we just start the game. We click on definite login. And as you can see, it doesn't work um, because login screen has not assigned. Ah, because I didn't assign it, did I not? Oh, I didn't. Okay, so the connected route needs to be assigned, of course. So now I start the game. We click on definite login. Still doesn't work. <laughs> Login screen is something is not connected. 
Now, good that we do this together because I was uh, forgetting to put the soul play prefab in here. So the soul play prefab um, has basically all the scripts that I needed um, to work with the um, Solana connection. So we have here a main installer, we have an NFT service where you can define um, the size of the NFTs. Uh, it's good to have a, them in small size because they use a lot of memory. Then there's a dummy icon here and uh, at runtime you can also see the NFTs here in this list. Then there's a transaction service, which is just uh, transferring some soil. I will add more um, logic and more examples to these things later. Then there's a message router because the, the whole SDK works kind of like adding a sending messages back and forth between game objects. So the nice thing is we can just put uh, uh, new prefabs or widgets in the just somewhere in the scene and they will automatically work like this NFT screen here, for example. Um, no matter where you put it, it will always work because it's listening to messages that, um, for example, the, the wallet holder service here sends. As soon as it's logged in, it sends a message, hey, I'm logged in, and then all the other components can react to it. Here in the wallet holder service, you can also define um, where the, uh, the in-game wallet should connect to, to DevNet in this case. Phantom wallet goes to mainnet. Then there's a staking service, in-app purchases service, Orca, Orca Whirlpools, Whirlpool service, and then minting service, which has a typo, actually. But <laughs> I think that's not so important. Okay, so now we can start, and now we should be able to um, log in. Yeah, so now we are logged in, and we can also mint ourselves an NFT. You can see it's now has minted this NFT. And if you want to have a few more informations about what's going on uh, currently in your app, you can also add this blimp system here. And the blimp system also listens to messages and it shows information on the screen. So now if I mint an NFT, you can see here one token account was loaded, uh, start minting um, NFT, loading and process, and now we can see we have two of them. And then you can also select an NFT and then it tells you, hey, add your logic for selecting NFT in the NFT context menu, um, CS. So now we're going to try this out in WebGL. So we just switch our platform to WebGL. Then I'm going to compile it and then we can immediately get all the NFTs from Phantom Wallet. So Unity crashed. So I just kind of do it again. So I drag and drop the Soul Play prefab in here. Then I go to the prefabs, I pick the login screen, put the login screen in here. Then I take the NFT screen, put the NFT screen in here. Then I take the uh, blimp system, put the blimp system in here, put the login screen here. And now I switch to, this time I save before I <laughs> do that. And now I uh, switch to WebGL and build and run. So what I like to do for build is uh, I create a folder called build and then I um, put that uh, folder into the git ignore so that all the data of the builds is not committed. So and here we have our beautiful WebGL version. So you can click uh, collect, connect to mainnet. We connect and we get an error. So I forgot again to uh, assign the connected route. So I will make some better error handling for that later. But now we have here our beautiful uh, WebGL example. We can log in. So yeah, sadly the public RPC um, response with uh, error code 429. So I would uh, recommend you to get yourself an RPC node, which you can use, for example, from Quick Node or something, and then you can Put it here in SoulPlay in the wallet holder service. You can click custom and then you can add here your custom RPC URL. And yeah, then everything should work. But uh, the other things now work already. So I will mint myself an NFT. And yeah, still can't load stuff because um, the RPC doesn't allow to get the accounts. Uh, let me quickly put in a URL, uh, like an RPC. So yeah, if you go to Quick Note, you can get uh, 10, 10 million API credits for free. And then if you create an account here, you can then get a URL and that you can put in your game and then everything should work fine. So now I can log in here, I get all my NFTs and I can also mint an NFT here easily. And yeah, now I have one more of these beautiful pictures. And now I'm going to show you like a little bit more complicated example maybe. 
let's add um, token swap as well. So what we do is we create a scroll view, make it expand. Then here in the content of the scroll view, we put the NFT screen. Um, we use the scroll view as the connected route. Then uh, in addition to the NFT screen, we also put uh, the token screen now. Then we put here a vertical layout group. We let it expand in height. We put a content size fitter. We make it vertical preferred size. We put uh, layout elements here and put this one to 1500. And now we should have a nice little scroll view where you can scroll through the screens. And we want this to only scroll vertically. And now we have here the um, the NFT screen on top and then below this we have our token screen and here you can already see one of the other widgets um, it's the it's a widget that shows you the current amount of a token so for example here the orca widget it's just a token panel and you put the token mint address and then it shows you automatically the amount of token that you have and the other thing is here the orca swap widget if you put this in, you can put uh, you can whitelist um, an Orca Whirlpool SDK, uh, Whirlpool address, and then it will show the pool, and you can click on it, and then it will open a pop-up where you can swap these tokens. And for this pop-up to work, we also need to put the Orca token to uh, swap pop-up in the scene. So this has a root game object which will en be enabled and disabled depending on if you click on the uh, on the swap icon so i'm going to compile this again and then show you how it works so now if we log in we will have here on the top the tokens the uh, watch the nfts then we can mint new nfts we can link to another page on mobile this will deep link into phantom then you can refresh the NFTs and you can refresh the NFTs without caching, which takes a bit longer. And here on the bottom, we can now use the Orca Whirlpools to swap tokens. So for example, I can swap 0.1 Orca to 0.08 USDC. And I can approve that. And then the transaction is finalized and you can see the uh, token amounts here update immediately. What I just noticed uh, is that the uh, blimps were below the pop-up, so I need to put the blimp system below the pop-up. And yeah, that's uh, that's it. It's a simple example. It also works on DevNet, so if I start it here in the editor, it will automatically uh, request an airdrop to get some SOL. See, I have now 0 0.98 SOL, and I can use these immediately to mint NFTs. And I haven't set up any whirlpools for DevNet, but I think there are some. So you could also uh, try out the whirlpools on DevNet. Yeah, I hope this um, helped a bit to make it uh, a bit easier to work with. Let me know if you have any features that you would like to have or uh, any complaints or anything that could be better. It's still a bit rough around the edges, so I will uh, try to make it nicer in the future. But um, yeah, I just wanted to get it out quickly so that you can, uh, you guys can continue working on your on your games. Um, subscribe to the channel, please, because if we have 100 subscribers, then we can name our channel. And uh, you can also subscribe to me on Twitter, um, Solplay Jonas. Then you get the newest updates about uh, SDK always. Um, yeah, see you next time.